Hi, now, this is the first of several parts where I will dissect the data models of different digital library platforms. And I'm starting with Omeka because Omeka's data model is just bone simple. And I say this not in any kind of disparaging way. Uh, Omeka's data model is simple by design. It is intended to be simple. Um, the folks who have developed Omeka have described it, basically, I'm paraphrasing here, as WordPress for cultural heritage institutions. They do, in fact, make the WordPress comparison explicitly. But the point is that Omeka is intended to be a very easy to use, low bar to entry application, and it's deliberately designed to be straightforward and simple to use for that purpose. So, what are the entities that Omeka recognizes? Well, let's look at the admin dashboard for our course site. What we see here are items, collections, and users. And that's it. Item is the only one of these that is what's called a first class entity. And what that means is that item is the most basic entity as far as Omeka is concerned. Item <clears throat> is the basis for everything else that Omeka does. So let's take a look at a single item. This is the page where you can edit the metadata for an individual item, and let's ignore the Dublin Core metadata for the moment and just concentrate on the menu <clears throat> on the left-hand side. What can you do with an item? You can assign Dublin Core metadata. You can assign some metadata to the item type. In this case, it's a, it's a still image. You can assign an item to a collection. You can specify the file, the specific still image. In this case, I believe it's a JPEG that is this item. And you can assign tags to an item. That's about the size of it. Now, let's take a look at the diagram that comes from the Omeka documentation on managing items. So you'll notice that what is represented at the top of this diagram is the archive. That is the set of all items that have been uploaded into an Omeka instance. Each item has associated with it Dublin Core metadata, metadata about the item type, tags, files, and collections just like what's represented on the dashboard. Now let's take a look at item types on the admin dashboard for our, our Omeka instance. There are a variety of item types, document, moving image, et cetera, et cetera, still image. The still images are what we're dealing with, and a particular item has a file associated with it, and that file is of a particular type. Let's go back to the diagram here. Collections may contain subcollections, but ultimately each collection or subcollection is made up of items. So let's go back to the admin dashboard for collections. What can you do with a collection? You can give it a name, you can give it a description, you can specify collectors, that is users who, are, who have permission to add items to a collection. And down below, what you can't see here is you can set a couple of other settings. But that's about it. There's not a lot of manipulation that you can do to a collection. Back to the diagram. Tags. You can create a bunch of tags in Omeka and each tag 
can be assigned to a number of items, just like in any tag set. In the end, though, the item is the most important type of data object. It is the item to which tags are assigned. It is the item that is put into a collection, and a collection is nothing more than a set of items. So this will all, I think, become a little clearer with an example. So let's take a look at the Lincoln at 200 Omeka install. And I don't have access to the admin dashboard for this because this is not my project, but it makes a nice example anyway. So there are two exhibits, as they're called, in this particular project, Lincoln and the West and the Fiery Trail. But we'll come back to those in a moment. First, let's take a look at the sub-collections. And there are three, Newberry Library, Chicago History Museum, and Library of Congress. Now, let's look at the archive of all of the items in the collection. Right? There are 270 items in total that have been uploaded into the Lincoln at 200 project. Now, if I click on Newberry Library up in the upper right-hand corner by filter, you see that there are 53 items in the Newberry Library's sub-collection. Right? So the total collection, the archive, contains 270 items. There are three sub-collections. Each one has some smaller, obviously, number of items in it. So now let's go back to the exhibits. Let's take a look at the Lincoln and the West exhibit. On this page, we have a single item, a still image, embedded in a long essay. If we look at another page, America in 1809, we have a still image embedded in a long essay. And this model of presenting materials is very much based on uh, museum exhibits. Museum exhibits will always have some kind of contextualizing information placed next to an object. It's rarely this long an essay, but the idea is the same. Single object contextualizing metadata, if you will. Let's look at another item, the Kentucky Frontier. Again, single image contextualizing essay. And the item is the central feature of each page, is the point here. Items are the central feature of the exhibits. And the structure of this exhibit is that there are, there is a navigation through the materials in the exhibit where there's a, a menu down the left-hand side with sub-items, but each category, if you will, corresponds to only a single item with additional metadata surrounding it. So if we click on View in Archive for this particular map, what we see is <clears throat> the metadata under More Information. It's not actually called metadata in this particular exhibit the metadata for this particular map. Call number, we see that it's in the collection for Newberry Library and the tags that are associated with this particular item. So, back to our diagram. The Omeka data model identifies items, item types, collections, users, and tags. And that's it. Item is the first class object. It is the type that all other entities are tied to. And that's it. That is the entirety of the Omeka data model. Simple. 